What's up everybody, Silver here with another Halo Wars 2 Achievement Guide. This time we are doing part 3 of Awakening the Nightmare on Legendary. This is the mission Light the Fuse. So start up this mission on Legendary. Uh, we have some skulls on to start. Um, we have Pain Train, Bountiful Harvest, Emperor, Total Annihilation, Pestilence, and Sugar Cookies. So we usually have a couple more on, um, but I decided to not put those on because they're actually detrimental to your cause in this one scenario. Um, so just put those skulls on that I just listed and to start we're gonna uh, go around the the horn here and just blow up all the uh, these little orange crystal looking things um, this is actually how you get power in this mission um, you don't get to uh, make any of the uh, extractors um, you actually can't make them so you have to go around this whole mission and blow up these crystals to collect power so start off by doing that and uh, you actually have to gain 24,000 power to uh, activate this drill. There's three drills in the center of this map and they each cost 8,000 each so we'll need 24,000 in all but we're actually just going to use the power we gather to upgrade our base and all of our units and stuff at first um, so we could have a, a good army uh, for the end battle here so uh, just go around and you can see there will be uh, a bunch of these bases that just spew a bunch of flood out every now and then so uh, we'll just go around the map and blow up all these crystals and then every now and then we'll have to kind of retreat and uh, defend our base a little bit. But our base should be pretty self-sufficient uh, for the most part uh, eventually. So uh, we'll get there. But just run around here. You can see here's the first wave coming in. It's not too bad. Uh, if you set up a bunch of... Uh, oh, for my base, I should probably mention what I threw on there. Basically, uh, I just threw on all supply pads at first and a uh, one of the mega turrets. And then once I upgraded it, so I had the two additional slots in the back, I put in a, uh, what is it called? It's the vehicle bay, basically. And also the war council. So throw that on um, so we could upgrade our army and also make a bunch of vehicles. And there are six uh, turret spots. You could put a sensor tower or a turret on um, around the base here. So throw those on. They mostly serve as distractions. You're probably going to have a ton of supplies in this mission because you have no reason to build extractors, so you have a bunch of harvesters on your base, and uh, as a result, you'll have an excess of supplies. So I just use the the turrets as distractions mostly, so I won't end up uh, upgrading them at all, like to a flamethrower or a anti-vehicle or anti-air. Uh, I'll just keep building them, and uh, they keep dying, but they distract the uh, the enemies. And the reason I have the Pestilence Skull on is because uh, I'm going to make a bunch of shielded units. So I'm going to make a bunch of Locusts and Wraiths. And by doing that, um, the enemy loses health uh, over time. That's what, what the Pestilence Skull does. Is it actually, as soon as a unit comes into existence, it's built or whatever, or it spawns on the map, it starts losing health until it's about to uh, down to 10% health. So uh, I'll take advantage of that. So the enemy will have like 10% health. And uh, I will have 10% health as well, but my units have a shield as well. So the shield is unaffected by that skull, so I have a little bit of an advantage. So I could uh, run in there, take some damage. Uh, once my shield starts dropping, I could retreat and then wait for it to recharge. And then I could just head back in there and uh, just start over, basically. Um, so the enemy does not have that, uh, that ability. So it's a big advantage for us. So I make a bunch of uh, locusts and wraiths. I split it down the middle half and half and uh, we're just gonna run around the map here so I'm gonna lose my I start off with uh, a bunch of different units um, because that's what you spawn with into the uh, into the first part of this mission here so I'm, uh, I'm not gonna care when they die I'm gonna be I'm gonna be happy about it so you can see we're making our way around the map you can see on the mini map there's a ton of like yellow orangish dots that is where all of the power is and uh, so just make your way slowly and surely around the map. These uh, little pod-like things that I'm blowing up, you want to make sure that you're taking those uh, things out manually. Um, unfortunately, your your uh, units don't target them automatically, um, so you have to actually point and click at them every time you want to take one out. And what it does is it spawns it. They blow up, and they will uh, spawn new flood forms into the world. Um, and the reason you want to do that is because... Um, if you like get near them, they will actually just blow up on their own. So you don't want to accidentally drive over all these things and then spawn a ton of flood into the world. So you want to take them out one by one as you're making your way through uh, all this uh, this territory. So um, we're just going to slowly do that. 
you can see this is one of the the big uh, blobby thing here the big flood base is actually uh, harmless at this point um, but this is one of the areas where the uh, the flood will spawn out of you can see there's the uh, rupture pressure percentage which is climbing on the top of the screen it's at 58 percent now so um, it will just keep going up until uh, it hits 100 and then there will be another wave of flood that come uh, swarming at your base so that's what that is so keep an eye on that especially when you're right next to one of those uh, big blobby things of course and just continuously monitor your uh, the turrets you have around your base so you can see I'm building one right there so just keep uh, an eye on that again the uh, the turrets I'm not looking for uh, them to dish out a lot of damage I'm just looking at them to uh, be a distraction so you can see I'm just splitting up all of my units between wraiths and uh, locusts at this point so uh, yeah just to make your way around the map um, not much to explain other than that uh, obviously you want to you can see me blowing up my war council I just I, I had second thoughts I was gonna build a second uh, whatever it's called vehicle depot um, but I decided, or a foundry is what it's called for the banished. But I decided to, uh, like halfway through, I just blew it up again. I'm going to build a war council again. Uh, you don't have to do that, but, you know, I, I recommend not doing that, actually. But uh, I decided to uh, just, you know, allow that uh, that one foundry to build all those units. I was thinking, since I was building a ton, I would uh, save some time by having two foundries and pump out units. Uh, side by side but then I went back on that uh, so yeah the war council just uh, slowly upgrade everything the only thing I don't really use is the honor guard in this because he's just an infantry unit um, so I, do, I just don't use him that's it just use the locusts and the wraiths they are sufficient oh and uh, of course Pavium is uh, running around with you with his grenade launcher so this area also has a big floody base that is harmless but it is surrounded by the tentacles which are not are which are wait I almost did a double negative and confused myself they are harmful they you could see them slapping me around so definitely attack those tentacles um, the flood base itself is harmless until it blows up with the uh, the flood spores and everything but the uh, the tentacles around it could damage you so make sure to uh, not ignore those guys so again we're just running around collecting all these uh, crystals and we're gonna activate our uh, our drills in the middle of the map eventually so here we go just run around um, and I'm gonna skip ahead in a little bit because this is pretty much the same thing for a long time um, but once you get 8,000 power um, you could go to the middle of the map and uh, use it to activate the one of the drills and then do that two more times to activate the second and third drill and it looks like the rupture pressure is climbing here um, we should probably go back to the base at this point probably Let's take these crystals with us, though. We're living on the edge. But we should probably talk about some leader powers. I like to upgrade my Atrioxus Bulwark. I like to upgrade the uh, the Reign of Fire, which is the second leader power. It makes a bunch of beams uh, randomly kind of dance around in a big circle. A bunch of glassing beams. Uh, what else do I use? I use uh, Stace, or I use the Lich upgrade. You want to grab uh, that Lich uh, upgrade. It calls in. A lich and you could uh, kind of place it and it just hangs around and uh, we'll use that at the end so you could use it as many times as you want but I definitely use it at the end um, and then the other ones I don't really I don't really care about too much uh, you could uh, research mass stasis as well and uh, you could kind of freeze some uh, enemy units um, so you could kind of delay there you can actually damage them when they're in stasis um, but you could just uh, kind of delay their onslaught uh, so you could take out other enemies while those guys are frozen in time and space. Um, but yeah, that's definitely useful at the end. You could uh, trap one of those giant abominations, which we'll see in a little bit. But I'm going to skip ahead because this is pretty much the same stuff over and over again. We're just running around collecting these power crystals. Uh, once you do, uh, so there's a set amount on the map that you could see on the mini-map. But once you start uh, kind of collecting a bunch of them, uh, some will respawn where they used to be so it's not like you could just run out of uh, power crystals and then just be stuck because you can't uh, you don't have enough power to finish the level or anything they will regenerate over time so uh, no worries there but I'm gonna skip ahead now and I will see you in the future welcome to the future where this flood form is about to blow up in my face that big giant flood base 
Um, but we have collected all the power we need to. You can see we have activated two out of three drills. We just activated that third one right there, you can see. And we will be uh, hanging out by our base here for the remainder of the mission. So I throw down an Atriox's Bulwark just to heal up my units. Obviously Pestilence is on, so they will drop down to 10%, but it was just in case something was at like 1% health, uh, they'll be bumped back up to that 10%. Uh, but we are going to... I decided to upgrade my uh, front turrets there to flamethrowers, why not? And again, make sure you're uh, monitoring these uh, turrets around your map. There's two here, one here, one here, and then kind of two in the middle, which are by the drills, which I skipped over right there. But uh, once you activate them, at the end of the most recent wave, they will uh, start uh, drilling. And when you do this, uh, I actually split up my, my units. So I'll have six wraiths and six locusts on one side and six and six on the other. And then I just throw a uh, pavium with uh, one group. I don't really pick whatever he decides to go with. And then uh, at this point, um, if you don't have any power, uh, don't worry because there will be a bunch of power that spawns in the middle here. Uh, in a little bit, so we'll see that happen, and I'll collect all of the power. Gives you a little bit of time to gather your resources before the big final battle here. And uh, one thing I should mention is behind the base. Oh, here you go. We can see the uh, they just all popped up here, so I'm going to send them around to gather the power resources. One thing to note is that in the back of your base, there are a bunch of those pods that I was talking about that when you get close to them or you drive over them, they'll just blow up. Um, you want to make sure that when you set like rally points, um, you don't accidentally have your units just uh, absentmindedly like drive over those while you're not paying attention. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to the paths that your uh, reinforcements are taking just when you build units to replace uh, units that you lose over time. Uh, make sure that they're not kind of going back behind your base because there are a ton of those uh, flood pods there. Um, and they'll just blow up those guys and convert them to like a floodified uh, unit. And then they'll have one more unit and you'll have one less. And you'll lose resources. So that's not cool. So we are getting ready here. I'm just observing the uh, the nice drill there. And you can see the rupture pressure is rapidly increasing uh, because there's a final battle here about to occur. So the reason I didn't have the uh, things that go boom skull on is because that skull makes it so that leaders, whenever they die, they go up in a big explosion. So that's nice when like your Spartan dies or Pavium dies or something and he makes a big explosion and takes out a bunch of units. But that goes two ways. So uh, those big giant abominations, this guy right here, when he dies, he'll go up in an explosion too because he is a leader unit. So I decided to rain of fire that guy. This side is doing pretty well on its own. Eventually I'm going to call in a Lich for one side and then uh, just combine my two sides here. So all the Locusts and Wraiths I'll put on one side and I'll put a Lich on the other side. Uh, so I do that for the, the second wave. There are two little waves of two abominations. So you can see one came from the left and one came from the right. That same thing's going to happen again. Um, so I'm just going to use the lich on one side and then move all my units to the other side. So people are coming from up here as well. Um, my turrets are pretty much handling that though. So just keep rebuilding those turrets. They serve as a distraction, and they take out units. And uh, again, serving as a distraction is a big thing with the Pestilence go on because time is health. Even though they are not, they may not be taking damage, they will just slowly lose health over time. So remember to use your leader powers. They are there to help you out. I'm going to call in the Lich in a hot second. There he goes. So he'll handle that side, and then uh, I'll use my units, and I'll put them all on the right side so they can handle that side. Um, so remember to keep calling in reinforcements. You'll lose uh, units over time, obviously, uh, during this big battle at the end. So just keep building those locusts and wraiths. And uh, throw down some of those uh, ultra mines if you feel inclined. That's not terribly important, but I just threw some down there. Why not? And you can see that Lich is doing some work over there. And uh, where were these abominations? There they are. There's one... And there is the other. I decided to throw that rain of fire down as well. Throw down a bulwark too. Why not? We're right at the end here. Those abominations uh, remind me of the final bosses in, or the final boss in Majora's Mask. But anyway, I digress. You can see the drill progress uh, bar flashing on the top right area of the uh, the HUD, and we can see that it's almost full. So 
Uh, we've killed the abominations. We're pretty much done here, just mopping up the uh, rest of the enemies. And we're about to hit the cutscene here. That is all, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Follow me on Twitter at Halo Completion and on Twitch and Mixer at Silver Scorpion 4. And check out my podcast called Halo Conversationalists. And I'll see you guys later for more Halo achievements.